What about spending time together? Okay, if you don't have it like that, just say that. Just like how you can get crafty with trying to convince me that you do, get crafty with telling the truth that you actually can. Get crafty with that, arts and crafts. Go to Michael's. Yeah. Straight like that. Hey, babe. It's Asia Christina. <laughs> nice to meet you. This is Quality Queen Control. What is happening? Hello, angels. Welcome back to another episode of Quality Queen Control. Now, this is what is happening. Now, I know I give you guys a mini update. And as I'm saying this, girl, I can't even remember what happened last week. Oh, yeah, that's right. I feel like I'm repeating myself, though, because I think I must have recorded because I like to have like a couple videos, at least one video ahead of time. So I might have said this in a video already, but I got back from one of my best friend's bachelorette party and I had so much fun. I was upstate and it was about three and a half hours away from me. So it was really nice. Like, honestly, I feel like I'm more of like a mountain house girl than like a beach girl. You know, I'm not really like sanding my toes like that irritates me. You want to irritate me? Sand in my toes. OK, I don't enjoy baking in the sun because I'm not bread and it's just not really my thing. Like when I'm baking, I want to bake like cookies, but I don't want to be baked. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then I was having a conversation with one of my friends and, and I was like, I feel like the sun hits different depending on what state and country you're in. And he agreed with me. So we randomly spoke about the fact that in Miami, he ended up getting sunburned and he didn't even think that that was possible for him. And he literally got sunburned and it was very painful. And I was saying, yeah, because when I was in Puerto Rico, I loved the tan that I got. I feel like the sun hit me a lot different. So you guys let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have that same, if you share that same sentiment. So this video today was actually requested and you know, certain things that you guys, because I do read the comments. I mean, hello. I really do try to be as engaging as possible with you guys. And there was a comment that stuck out to me that I really, really loved of, uh, I don't even remember her name, but she suggested that I talk about what hormones do we release as men and women that make us connected to one another? What bonds us? Like, and and just, I want to start off by saying this. And as you guys can see from the title, this is why it is so important to wait, okay, before you cross over that line. I want to keep it very PG on here. This is why you wait to cross that line. There's a reason why. And I will talk about this from a scientific and psychological perspective and also a little bit from a biblical perspective why it is important to wait. I got my notes here. I went to town. I went crazy. So I was super excited when she asked this because there have been times in the past where I've briefly shared science of this and the reason why I love I'm 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 loving this podcast episode already today is because of the fact that this gives you guys a legitimate reason as to why it is important to wait <laughs> to wane. I combine the words abstain and wait. Why it's important to wait before you cross that line. Okay. So as I was doing my research, um, some of this comes from healthline.com. Well, actually, majority of it comes from healthline.com. Um, and if I remember, I'll link the articles down below. But I read it so you don't have to. So Number one, what is oxytocin? We've all heard of oxytocin, but I'm going to break everything down for you guys in layman's terms. Oxytocin is a neurotransmitter and a hormone that is produced in the hypothalamus. So this plays an important role in reproduction. Hear me out. So this has physical and also psychological effects, which includes influencing your social behavior as well as your emotion. And we all know that as women, we are naturally the emotional counterpart. End of story. So when you are attracted to a person, your brain is going to release dopamine. Your serotonin levels are going to increase. And therefore, oxytocin is produced. So this is going to cause you to feel a surge of positive emotion. Aisha, why do we bond with guys? And like, why is it that we always catch feelings? Just don't lie to yourself. I want you to know this right now, especially for my younger angels. Do not kid yourself and think, yeah, we're just going to be like friends with benefits. And like, what benefit? 
what benefit have we not learned by now? Some of you guys have been watching me since you were like, hmm, let's just say you were like 18, 18, 18. Some of you should be 22, 23 by now. Have I not trained you well? Have I not taught you well? And listen, I get it. We all make mistakes in life. But after after today's podcast episode, babe, we will know better. So I'm going to need you to do better. This is going to give you all of the answers that you need, okay? Continue to tap in. So like I said, it's gonna cause you to feel a surge of positive emotion. This is why when you are intimate with a, with a guy, you're going to feel, and the more you're doing it, you're gonna feel more positive emotions. Now you're over here thinking one thing in your head, but from a scientific level, none of what you think is actually ha uh, is happening. Let's talk about what's actually occurring. Now, I'm going to use, I'm going to interchange the word, I guess, intimacy. I'm interchanging that for actual activity. Do you guys pick it up on laying down? So intimacy has been found to stimulate the release of oxytocin, which creates a behavioral loop. This is why when you're with a guy and you get with him, you're sleeping with this guy, you're going to continue to do it because it it's also beyond the fact that, okay, I like this guy. I want to keep seeing him. And like I always say, you know, we as women, that is a form of us bonding with that guy and also connecting with them. And that's why, that's why we do it. That's one of the reasons that we do it. But for men, it's completely different. Now, being that we know that oxytocin is a bonding chemical, also known as the love hormone. To put it simply, when intimacy occurs between both men and women, we both release oxytocin, right? However, the responses are different because as women, we are bioengineered differently. So men are gonna release testosterone, which is the chemical that makes them pursue in the beginning, right? It's that hunt, it's that chase. So in the beginning, those levels of testosterone tend to be the highest when they're chasing and pursuing. And once that quest is conquered, if you cross over that threshold too soon, well, then the levels are going to drop causing you to be liked less, actually. Argue with your mother. I'm not here to debate with you. Don't get on here and debate with me. This is science. Now we're talking science. You will not come into my office and debate science right here and right now. No, you will not. Unless we are talking our Lord and Savior, you will not debate science with me. Okay, anyways. So, yes, it causes you to be le like less liked, to be honest. It's like, okay, itch, scratched, on to the next. So testosterone, it peaks and it uh, and it drops, which leads to men being on the hunt and wealth trying to find a new conquest to peak their testosterone <gasps> again. Now, unless vasopressin is released and in order to release vasopressin, you have to, I don't want to say enable, but this sounds kind of silly, but vasopressin receptors have to be released in order for things to change. And in order for that to be released, that's going to take time. Do you see where thing, we're starting to build the, the building blocks here? That's going to take time for vasopressin to be released, for those receptors to be released, which means that it is not testosterone that creates that commitment. So a man can feel an intense desire for a woman and not feel any emotional connection to that woman. I promise you, for those of you that have been in situationships, you know how it goes. Once you are assigned to the role of toy, <laughs> you will always be just that toy. And if you come out of that role, nobody wants to be like, oh, well, I mean, you've been here forever, so I guess this is as good as it's gonna get. Because at that point, he's settling, and so are you. You're settling because he's settling, and that's what you've always wanted. And he's settling because you're the only one sticking around. So because they can separate the intimacy and love, on the contrary, for women, those two things are actually intertwined. Like, come on, is it not clicking to you now? Like, what's not clicking, Stephen? In my head, I'm thinking, all right, because we all want the answers. Why is it that you just can't stop? It goes beyond, oh, 
I just like him and and I don't want to start over. Guys, I'm literally laying out the science of why these why you end up in these types of situations. This is why thinking that sleeping with a guy to get him to care about you doesn't work. What in the 16 year old is going on here? That that mentality is extremely juvenile. And some people really do thrive in these situationships because they're used to this level of toxicity because wanting what they don't really have is attracted to them. And this is not an obvious thing that you can call out into your immediate awareness half of the time. It's really not. Half of these guys that you know, they, they're telling you sweet nothings and they're they're convincing you that you're the only one and you're the only one that they take serious. Really? But I'm not even your girlfriend and you're you take me serious. I'm so confused. We're we're exclusive, but we're not really together. I mean, we're together, but we're not together. Like what are, what are, what is going on in society? What is going on with the fabric of society? I am scared. What have we become? Hmm. I don't really like it. Yeah, babe. Fix it. Now, because you're now bonding with someone that you're constantly releasing that love hormone with. And I've mentioned this in in videos uh, in the past that one of the biggest differences between men and women is that we experience intimacy differently. For men, it's a physical need determined by biological factors. So we as women experience intimacy in a way that We need, that's the fuel that makes us feel connected to our emotions. And also there are a bunch of hormonal factors as well. So this is why I say men do not experience this intimacy as a form of emotional attachment. And our desire for that intimacy is connected to our emotions and and we form relationships because of that as, as a result of it being a physiological and biological need for us. That is how we tend to bond. So with all those things considered, when you think about it, if there are less resources that are being invested into you, it's way easier to be ghosted in these types of dynamics. I'm telling you, do not kid yourself and think, and I always say this, that you are the exception to the rule. You're not the exception to the rule. You are the rule. Always think like that. I'm not even trying to be pessimistic. Don't think that you're exception. It's different. Is it? Is it different? See, the problem is, is that sometimes this, and this is a maturity thing where you always think that you're different and your situation's different. And I understand and I get it, but it's really not though, because I promise you the outcome, it's same case, different face. It's the same reason why we have patterns with the guys that we're attracted to. Let me tell you something about me, okay? There was a point in time where I was looking for familiarity in the guys that I was dating. Like I knew instantaneously when one guy reminded me of the next and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that. If it was different to me, I didn't even want to be around it until I finally caught on and I was like... My type can't be my type anymore. (laughs) I got to grow up. Mm, So you do too. You have to get the Gerber plan and grow up. You do. It's time. It's It's 2023. No one has excuses. And for all you young ones too, with the access that you have at your fingertips for free content such as this, there's no excuses for you either. Okay? Like you, we have to upgrade. So like I said, I told you guys this. Men do value what it is that they invest in, especially financially. This is why you'll have guys in certain circumstances where they will be in these types of relationships. I actually talked about this in one of my YouTube videos that I filmed. I don't know when you guys are going to see this and the sequence of things, but as I'm speaking right now, I filmed this video yesterday, the one that I'm referencing. And this was inspired by a conversation that I had with like my older sister, Michelle, and her uh, her boyfriend, G. and we were talking about the fact that people get into relationships or situationships by pretending to be the person that, you know, that individual wants instead of just going where you're going to be celebrated and not tolerated. Because I've always said this to you guys, being anything other than yourself is not sustainable. What type of life are we living if we can't live authentically? 
at what point are we also going to manage our expectations? For my, you know, younger, you know, subscribers, things like that, it's not realistic to hop on. You get on Instagram and you think that <laughs> you think it's sustainable to want a Chanel bag for your birthday and all these different things. Listen, we all love luxury. We get it. But we have to understand that you're not going to get that from your boyfriend that is working at, you know, Applebee's, Red Lobster. Now, I don't know their salary, but I don't necessarily think that it's going to be Chanel bag you know, the equivalent of a Chanel, but I don't think that that's going to really align, but that's, and then you get mad because your expectations from certain people that literally can't, or if someone is pretending like they're, they got it like that and whatever, they're spending all this money, but they're really doing it just to try and get something from you, right? They're trying to meet a goal. And then once they get that goal and they run out of money because they can't sustain this lifestyle, then they get resentful because they start switching up on you, right? You're sitting here confused because you're like, I'm so confused. I thought that you like you were taking me to this nice place, all these different things. Next thing you know, you turn around and you never see another restaurant a day in your life again. You're confused. You're thinking, is it is it me, Lord? Is it me? Am I the reason why I have not seen like another restaurant? What's going on? He's not taking me out to steakhouses. Da, 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 da. Now it all adds up to me. I remember I was doing a bunch of consults and the overall arching theme at one point was the fact that a lot of guys were switching up their behavior and like the girls that I was speaking to, they couldn't figure out why. And it really just clicked to me where I'm like, oh my goodness, it wasn't sustainable anymore. What they were pretending to provide was not sustainable. Some men will look at you and they will make an assessment of what they think that is needed to draw you in, but it's all smoke and mirrors. It's not something that is sustainable for them. So they're gonna go to your Instagram. They're gonna say, "Uh uh-huh, yeah. So she, she looks expensive. Well, everybody likes nice things. Let me go and bother her. Let me interrupt her spirit. Yeah, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to try and get with her. Then you ask this girl out. You take her to a really nice restaurant. You guys go on, if you're even lucky at this point, three really nice dates, top tier, conversations flowing and it's going. Next thing you know, you turn around and now it's, how about we just... How about we just spend some time at, at you know, at, at the house tonight or even worse, he will offer your place instead. You're spending time there, you know, with, with each other. You're thinking, well, he deserves it because he did take me on these really nice dates. No guy has been this consistent with the three dates. I told you guys, be careful. It's such a thin line. You have to be so careful when you encounter something for the first time that you've never experienced because it can blow your mind into thinking, oh, this is different. Oh, he's serious about me. No, it needs way more time. We don't know what he what he's serious about. We don't know. Yeah. So here you go thinking that this is going to be a different dynamic. And yes, give or take the experience within itself is arguably different. Yes. But we still have to see where this is heading. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? So like I said, when it comes to less things being invested in you, hands down, period, men are going to value what they invest in, especially when it comes to the money, honey, consistently being spent with you. Even think about the questions, the the subject areas that, that you guys talk about. I do not enjoy when every single thing has some sort of sexual innuendo. Like, is that your sense of humor? Like, you don't have anything else to talk about? I'm so confused. So their words, this is what we have to watch. Their words can cater, and they do. They cater to our emotions. They bring out that love hormone. And then, because it's releasing that oxytocin, now we are finding ourselves getting a little bit trapped. And we have to be careful also of men who want to be, you know, acting on consequence, right? These guys, you have certain types of guys that are super cheapy cheap. These are going to be the guys that are like on these dating apps that they think that going for a hike is a date. They think that going for ice cream and uh, going for coffee is a, a date idea. No, it's not. That's for coworkers. Are you my coworker? Do you want to just be my platonic friend? Is that what you want? Because you can have that. But I have enough friends. 
So I'm good. You can find someone else that you think that that aligns with because it's not me. Okay. Some guys will play the cheapy cheap thing. Okay. And they want to blame it on, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a very generous guy, but I, I just want to make sure that, you know, it's the right one because like a lot of girls problem is, is that they are very materialistic and it's not really all about that. Like what, like what about the connection that you guys have? And like, what about spending time together? Okay. If you don't have it like that, just say that. Just like how you can get crafty with trying to convince me that you do, get crafty with with telling the truth that you actually can't. Get crafty with that, arts and crafts. Go to Michael's. Yeah. Straight like that. These type of cheapy, cheapy men, okay, they then act on consequence. And then they want to trauma bond with you. So you think that you're so close now. Right, right as you're about to officially walk out the door because your brain was like, enough. Then here he comes. You know what? I just realized that uh, it's like now all of a sudden he's doing all the things that you wanted in the relationship. Bye. I don't do Johnny come lately's. I don't do those because that's how you get trapped. You think it's going to be different. Oh, he he really wants me. Huh? Listen, when you don't value something, you lose it. End of story. And I will never change my opinion on that because a smart man, a mature man, an emotionally mature man, an emotionally stable man is not going to try and trauma bond with you in order to keep you connected to him. Hindsight is always 2020. But like I said, I do not believe in being blindsided by people's actions. There are always signs. You knew what it was with this guy. You knew that he is unreliable. You know that he is acting funny. You know that he's involved with someone else. To add further context to my point, right? Now, I want to read this verbatim. So according to Healthline.com, we know oxytocin affects males and females differently, especially in the social context. And this may be because the hormone acts differently, like I mentioned to you guys earlier, in women and men. So this portion of your brain is responsible for the motivation, reward, and also emotion. So for example, oxytocin is going to factor in also to how women identify who to befriend and how to tend to those relationships. And that hormone also is going to play a role in the way that men identify competitive relationships and navigate the fight or flight response. Where do emotions actually come from? So there are a group of interconnected structures that are located in your brain that's responsible for your behavioral and emotional responses. And how many of there are there? I think there's about, let me see, I'm going to count them. One, two, three, four. There's about four parts of your brain that control emotions, but I only want to place, I'll just name them for you. It's the hypothalamus, it's the hippocampus, the amygdala, and also the limbic cortex. Now, I'm not going to go through, okay, maybe, fine, I would, I fine, because you guys love a little science, so let's get into it. So the hypothalamus, in addition to controlling emotional responses, it's also involved in your sexual responses, their hormone release and regulating body temperature. The hippocampus, it helps to preserve and retrieve memories. It also plays a role in how you understand the spatial dimensions of your environment. Your amygdala helps to coordinate responses to things in your environment especially those that trigger an emotional response. So this structure plays an important role in fear and in anger. And then lastly, the limbic cortex, which this contains two structures, which is the cingulate gyrus. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. And the parahippocampal gyrus. So together, they impact your mood, motivation, and your judgment. These are what controls the emotions. It is beyond your control. It is a scientific thing. So your situationship is not different. Those lies that the guy is telling you, you have to think, okay, scientifically here, honestly, this is how I would speak to myself. This is going to woo and coo at me 
to, you know, woo me in. And this is appealing to my love hormone. We all love hearing great things about ourselves. We all love hearing that we are so special and we're the most beautiful thing ever. Da, 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 da. But we have to be better judges of character. We have to have way more discernment. This is why it is so important to wait because we're not getting those in, those investments because as soon as you feel like you're in the clear, oh, I don't have to worry about anything anymore. It's like it and that goes to show it is those that behavioral loop because of the amount of times that you've released that oxytocin by bonding with that guy by prematurely getting involved with him that is now blocking everything. Every time you try and think of him, you can't think of anything but great memories. And those are, now you're in the thick of it. So those memories are overriding your common sense and all of logic because this is now, you're now connected to this person. You're now bonded to this person. And this is why even from a biblical sense, like God wants us to abstain from this and to wait because he knows involving yourself in things like this, you know, will will suffer the consequences. And this is why he has these guidelines for us because God invented intimacy. I know Trey Song said he invented it, he invented intimacy, but it was actually God. I don't know if I don't know if you guys knew that, but that that's who actually invented it. And he wants us to enjoy things like that. But it has to be in the right situation. Okay, these established guidelines are to actually help us and to make us feel actual true connection and pleasure when we're supposed to. Do you understand? So this comes into question. What part of the brain controls love? Now, it might sound strange, but. The beginning of romantic love is actually associated with the stress response triggered by the hypothalamus. And it makes more sense when you think of being like nervous and giddy and having a little anxiety when you're falling for someone. And as these feelings grow, the hypothalamus is going to release, you know, it's going to be triggered to release the hormones such as dopamine oxytocin and vasopressin. All right. Dopamine is released when as your body's reward system. And this helps make love a desirable feeling. I found a really interesting article on how men fall in love that I want to read to you guys and how their brain responds. So they say that on this website, this is calmery.com just for reference. Now, there are stages of falling in love with a man. Now, the first stage, it says, is lust. So you can lust for someone that you're in love with, but you can also lust for someone that you don't love at all, which is like 90% of the time with these guys, because like we said, like we know from a scientific standpoint, that has nothing to do with an emotional connection. And lust, as we know, is not love and should not be mistaken for love. And this is what I talk about when I say it is so important to be able to have that emotional maturity and understand that, you know, when you're younger, you think that attention, all attention is great, right? You're not able to discern in what way does this guy really actually desire me? In what way does he actually enjoy my company? These are things that you think about and that through experience, you start to understand, depending on who's around you, that can help you, you know, put you onto game ahead of time. But you learn this as you, as you grow. So oh, it's attraction, all right? So during this attraction stage, you're gonna focus your attention on, you know, mating with, you know, that person. You know, you're, you're obsessing over them. You, you're, you wanna be around them all the time. And these feelings are caused by three chemicals, which are norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. So this stage, scientists say, it activates that brain, you know, your brain's reward center and has powerful effects on your behavior and emotions. And this usually lasts between six months to two years. And then you have attachment, which is long term love. And this stage is the key to success as it pertains to long term relationships. It's a calmer form of love that affects us differently compared to the attraction stage. And as we know by now, how men fall in love is simply not how women do. Okay, I just want to put I want to point that out there. If you didn't get it now, you, if you don't know now you know. Now, according to this article, 
about four years being in a relationship, the dopamine level decreases and the attraction goes down. Excuse me, how dare you? I digress. And if things are going well, the dopamine gets replaced by two hormones, which is the oxytocin and the vasopressin, which is present in the very beginning of the dynamic as well. And they create the desire to bond with your partner and nurture them. So attachment allows couples to stay together long enough to raise children and develop a deep, a deeper, meaningful bond, grow old together and feel contentment. So love actually begins at stage two, which is the attraction and progresses to stage three, which is attachment. But lust drives many couples to meet and form a bond, which can later lead to love. It is possible in some cases for couples to skip stage two and go right to stage three, such as in arranged marriages, again, according to this article. But these three stages apply to both men and women. But what happens on a biological level, emphasis on biological level is where the differences lie. So for men, they fall in love because certain neurotransmitters and hormones need to build up over time before a man and also, you know, a woman fall in love. Now, according to love biologists, we love I didn't even know that was a thing. Did you? Girl, love biologist Don Masler. The chemicals, dopamine and vasopressin, are vital for. Is this not what I said? You guys, I just pulled up this article. I just pulled it up and I was telling you, I told you so. Dopamine and vasopressin are vital for men to start falling in love, whereas oxytocin and dopamine are for women to fall in love. Oxytocin, often named the love or cuddle hormone, also plays an important role in men, but at a later stage. When men are dating, but are not yet in love, their testosterone levels are higher, like I said. Which, oh my gosh, this is the sentence. Eh, tap in, let me, let me say a little closer. Which blocks the bonding effects of oxytocin, aka in layman's terms, testosterone levels being high blocks the bonding effects of oxytocin because it's not developed until later in men. What does this tell you? Like I said, adding further context, for men, these are things that are going to occur a lot later in a dynamic. So what are we off to the races to? What are we rushing for? They're doing this as a physiological thing. It is natural for them. It is a biological thing for them to want to chase, 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 chase more than they're even catching, right? It's the name of the game, right? But it's actually what's happening on a biochemical level. Do you see, are you picking up what I'm laying down? So generally the hormones and and neurotransmitters needed for love, they build up gradually while dating, getting to know and building trust within a partner. So you cannot X to death thinking Oh, yeah. The way I put it down, he ain't going nowhere. Girl, do I know we're not still thinking that. I know that's not what we're thinking. Like, are we? It's not even a discussion. Argue with your mother. So, girl, I'm about to get into it. This article is so good. Does sex make men fall in love? A common misconception. I, it's like I'm in the spirit because I just said this to you guys and I just scrolled down again. I'm reading this article for the first time. And this is so good. A common misconception is that men fall in love in the bedroom. But according to that love biologist, Miss Maslar, she believes that some men actually lose interest. Is this not what I said in the beginning? Holy spirit, I hear you. If it happens too quickly. Do you see what I'm saying, babes? So that's why I it really grinds my gears in so many levels when people are like, well, well, my friend, she 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 got with her guy like a day into the meeting and and first date and they still stayed together. I don't care about your high school stories. You're I don't care about that. I don't care about the exceptions to the rule for the last time. And I mean that for the last time. I do not care. Because for the vast majority, that is simply not how it goes. A man's dopamine and vasopressin increase when they're dating a woman. They're enjoying it. And they're also interested in them but their vasopressin drops 
when they are having intimacy with a woman. Isn't that crazy? Isn't it strange? Now, a woman's dopamine and oxytocin will also gradually increase if we are enjoying dating a guy and we're also interested in them. However, the difference is that woman's oxytocin increases considerably when we are mating with that person. Now, we're going to talk about something called the Coolidge effect. The Coolidge effect is a biochemical phenomenon observed in animals where males progressively lose interest in mating with the same female, yet have heightened sexual interest in new females. It is believed that the Coolidge effect can sometimes come into play when you know what happens too quickly. And Maslar explains that when a man first starts dating, they're excited, right? Again, it's that testosterone. Their dopamine, their vasopressin goes up. But if they're satiated too quickly, they drop back down. Therefore, a man may lose interest. <clears throat> no, let me rewrite. A man will lose interest and pursue other woman and not be around long enough to fall in love. All I'm saying in this, if you haven't grabbed anything yet, which what are you doing if you haven't, that in order for to be genuinely cared for, this is going to take time for both men and women. This is why it's important for couples, according to this article, not out of Asia Christina's mouth, to not confuse the exhilarating feeling of lust for love to avoid trouble later down the road. This is why commitment could be the key. <clears throat> Let me reword that. Should be the key is the key to love for men. Studies studies show that men in committed romantic relationships have 21% lower testosterone than men who are not. That means that when a man commits, their testosterone will no longer be blocking the bonding chemical oxytocin, helping them to fall in love and develop a long-term bond. I want you to replay this entire episode over and over again till baby, you practically memorize it because this is the answer to why we're being ghosted. This is the answer to why you need to wait. This is the answer on why you need to be way more discerning with who you're just giving yourself to. Now, interestingly enough, when a man's testosterone drops after committing to someone, it doesn't mean that they will experience a diminished drive, but they should lose interest in pursuing from other women. So we have talked about what happens to a man when they fall in love and the chemical processes that are involved. So what other practical advice can we take from this? Number one, be prepared for changes in your body. So when you fall in love and your brain is releasing those, you know, that cocktail of chemicals that alter everything from your sleeping habits to your appetite, you guys ever fall in love and it's like, I don't even need to eat. Being around you is food. Being around you is air. No air, air, no more like Jordan sparks to it. You might find yourself wanting to spend more time with your partner and maybe even experience feeling more needy and dependent, but you will eventually adjust. Remember how I gave you guys that analogy in like a couple of older videos where I was saying that because love is like a chemical imbalance, essentially, you will go like in the beginning when you're fault, when you have fell in love officially, it's like you will do the like craziest thing, so to speak, for that person because it, of the cocktail of chemicals that are actually being released. Now, if a man becomes, you know, addicted, so to speak, to their partner, this can indicate that you're at the romantic love stage. And it's suggested, according to this article, to consider abstaining from for a while to see if the relationship is built more on love than lust. Science again, baby. So as we see from the data above, if a man loses interest in pursuing other women and finds their partner most desirable, this is a good interest in building long-term relationships. So angels, in conclusion, okay, laptop closed. I want you guys to consider all of the things discussed in today's episode because this, like I said, is the answer, it's the reason for the season, it's the reason for why things happen between men and women the way that they do. And having this science to back things up, I don't really know what other proof that we need. So I really hope that this was thought-provoking, that this was this serves as encouragement, 
Because when you are informed, you can then make a more educated decision. And I'm all about making educated decisions to the best of my ability. And while I understand that we are all doing the best that we can according to our level of consciousness, it is my duty, self-proclaimed duty, to offer you guys these educational tidbits and try and break them down into very palatable ways so that it's easier to digest for you guys. And I hope that this brings clarity for some of you and that this really offers the answers and gives you insight into how men and women process love and and how these you know stages go. So with that being said, thank you so much. Make sure that you guys give this video a thumbs up. Do not forget that we are on the road to 300K. Okay, teamwork makes the dream work. If you've made it this far, comment with a yellow heart. This is exclusive only for those of you that have watched it start to finish. And I love seeing when you guys repost, you know, your clips of me. I If I see it, it will always get reposted. So I love when you guys do that. It like I just love seeing what your favorite parts are. And then also comment down below anything else that you guys would like me to discuss. So remember, and if you found this to be useful, share it with a friend because I guarantee that there's somebody that needs to see this. And even if you're watching this right now, you were meant to be watching this. <laughs> with that being said, angels, thank you guys so much for watching me, for listening to me as well. It's like, oh my God, all of a sudden I turn into a visual podcast and I forget that it's also audio. <laughs> with that being said, do not forget that I love you and God loves you. And I'll speak to you beautiful angels in my next podcast episode. Mwah.